Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and welcome to yet another introduction to yet another Packard Bell. That's right, folks. Um, we've got another one, and this time um, we're going to unbox it on camera, unlike the last one. Um, last one, there wasn't really much to see in the box worth showing, but this one may have a few goodies in here. This was sent to me by a good friend of mine, well, actually sold to me by a good friend of mine, gave me a real good deal on it on my... Uh, Packard Bell Facebook group. Um, I'm not going to name names, but he um, he does videos um, from time to time about old computers um, and other uh, old electronics and whatnot. So um, really cool guy, and he's been watching my channel for a while. And he bought this Packard Bell on eBay about a year or two ago. And he used it for a while, then decided to uh, move on to something else, so he sold it to me. The Packard Bell in question is a Packard Bell Platinum Pro 22 from February of 1996, which we will be introduced to momentarily once we unbox it, which we will do right now. Alright, it's a pretty big box. This came all the way from Idaho. So it had a very um, long journey from Idaho to North Carolina. O only took two days to get here, surprisingly. Very surprised, su very surprising for the United States Postal Service. My best friend, um, she almost wound up moving to Idaho from North Carolina about eight years ago, but that thing fell through which was good news for her and me. <laughs> but that is a very, very, very long story about how all that happened. Okay, almost there. Ah. These are actually left-handed scissors I'm using, by the way. Even though I'm right-handed. Bought these at Staples years ago. Not once looking at the package, but I still use them though, they work good enough. Now this part is wanting to be a little problematic. Oh, it says right here, I don't know if you can see, it says, To the Nostalgia Mall, Care of Billy Core. <laughs> nice little touch there. Okay, lots of bubble wrap here. Okay, not sure what this is. Uh, we'll look at that later, I suppose. Got a Packer Bell keyboard. You can never have too many of these bad boys. Very good keyboards, I must add. Oh, I didn't know I was getting another one of these. A little bit nasty, but still good to have. Another Packer Bell mouse. Of the PS2 persuasion. Of course, there's no such thing as USB then. And I believe this is the computer itself. Okay, took a while to get it out of its bubble wrap, but here's our new toy. The Packard Bell Platinum Pro 22. This um, is a computer that originally had a 166 megahertz Pentium. I think um, 
Yep, um, t a 2 gig hard drive originally, don't know if that's still in there. And 24 megs of RAM, which um, may have been upgraded at some point, but um, it's in pretty good condition. It's a little, little bit yellow, but not as much as the uh, last Packer Bell Designer Tower we saw on this channel. Has a um, something kind of interesting. This is something that uh, the previous owner uh, that sold this to me, Jerry Rigged. I'll just take it off there. This is a front-mounted um, compact flash card slot. This is a uh, this was made by uh, StarTech. Here's the box it came in, and as you can see, it was a 3.5 inch device, but Originally it was black. Well, he spray painted it beige and put it in a beige five and a quarter inch bracket, so it fits nicely there. Much better um, spray spray paint job than I could have ever done. <laughs> Don't know if I'll keep that in there or not. I'm actually considering trying the uh, SD card solution in here, like we did on the last one. This Packard Bell is actually replacing the Multimedia D142 we just saw on this channel. Um, I'll explain why um, in a little bit. You can see it has a six-speed CD-ROM drive up there. There should be a uh, bracket right there, but I think it may have fallen back in there. <laughs> and there's a spec sticker, which is still on there. Pretty worn, though, I must say. But I do have a way of replacing this now. We're not going to do this in this video, but more on that later. And there's the badge, Platinum Pro XXII, which is the Roman numerals for 22. So we'll flip it around. Built in Sacramento, California, like all the others. Okay, let's just take it off the tripod then. <laughs> There's the uh, Packard Bell sound card slash modem card. A Ethernet card that the previous owner added. I believe it's a 3COM. A 2 PS2 mouse and keyboard. Serial parallel and BGA out. This uses a uh, PB640 motherboard. Same that's in the uh, corner Packard Bell, which will be coming back. Don't worry. Still waiting on the power supply to get fixed. And it was manufactured February the 7th of 1996. So let's uh, open it up, shall we? Okay. Took the screws off off camera. That's, this ca this um, is missing the uh, metal part. Not sure if that really had much use anyway. It was probably just for RF shielding for FCC compliance. And here we are. Let's see. There's our Pentium 166. I will be putting my uh, Pentium MMX Overdrive in there. And there's a uh, Cache Coast module there. Our Ethernet card, sound card. There was something rattling around in here, but I don't know what it was. Maybe it's on this side. Okay, so the original hard drive is not here. That's too bad, so no system credentials. See, I don't know what was making that noise. Got our light on power supply. Let's see what's in this box here. Okay, this is a uh, this is for if you want to use the CF card in the expansion slot bracket. And in here, okay, we got a Packard Bell Master CD copy. I guess he made it. A uh, the boot floppy for it. A 
Okay, got that metal bracket there. And a uh, five and a quarter inch um, blank there. I thought he would um, include the, f the uh, one that would go right here. I am not seeing it. Oh well. <laughs> that must have been what was rallying around. Okay, this cable's out of the way. So, um, let me do some more poking around in here and then we can go hook it up. Okay, here's the two side by side. Um, this is the one we got today and this is the one we got about a month ago. This one um, is a little bit more yellowed than this one is, although eh, looking at them now they're about the same really. But I just like the era of hardware in here better, and it'll still take the um, the upgrades I put in this one, which I, this time I will do off camera. If you want to see what I'm about to do to this, um, just watch the previous video about this computer. <laughs> so um, this will be sold, unfortunately, um, just because I don't need it, and I want to make back the money I um, spent to get this one, which I prefer. And this one will be staying. For the time being. So let's go ahead and uh, hook it up and see what it can do. Okay, here we go. Alright, that was quick. I believe the CMOS battery in here is fairly new, so that's good. We don't have to worry about it. And I still got the stock 24 megs of RAM. And it's not picking up a hard drive, but that's because there isn't one. It's, okay, it's doing some kind of a uh, LAN boot from the uh, Ethernet card, it looks like. Uh, restart so I can check out the BIOS. Uh, it seems to be happy and healthy so far. Okay, um, date and time. Date is right. Minute. It, the time is a few minutes behind. But considering how these usually are, it's not that big a deal. 166 megahertz Pentium. Sorry for the um, flickering, by the way. Yeah, there's really nothing I really need to be doing here. It's got 256k of cash. So this internally, this system is pretty much the same as my uh, corner Packard Bell, same motherboard and everything. Okay, it's actually several days later. Um, I did all the upgrades, um, hardware and software-wise, off camera. And what are my impressions of this computer after several days of ownership? Well, I gotta say the Packard Bell Platinum Pro 22 is one heck of a vintage computer. It's not giving me a single problem. Very, very reliable. It's a little bit more reliable than the Multimedia D142, which is now boxed up, ready to be sold on eBay. And this computer, it, it it's just a good computer. It has the PV640 motherboard in it, same that's same board that's in the corner Packard Bell and I've used it before. These are very good reliable boards. A little bit more reliable than the Orlando boards um, that came a little bit later which was in the D142. So, um, upgrades. Um, I've given this computer a 32 gigabyte micro SD card in place of a hard drive. This is the same card um, that I tried to get to work in the D142 and among other CF cards and SD cards I used in that computer, they would not work in that computer, but this computer works with the 32 gig card without any troubles at all. Of course, I need to had to install drive overlay software, but after doing that, it's worked beautifully. I've got a um, 16 gig partition for Windows and another 16 gig partition for data. At least I think that's how I organized it. I will confirm that in a moment. So um, it's got 32 gig um, storage. Now it's now been upgraded from. 24 megs of RAM to 32 megs of RAM 
has a uh, much faster CD-ROM drive here. I'm not sure of the speed, but it's a lot faster. It's, I, I believe this came out of a Dell um, Dimension 4100 from the early 2000s, so it works great. I uh, replaced the CPU. Um, it did have a 133, um, not 133, that was the D142. It had a 166 megahertz Pentium, but it's now been upgraded to a 200 megahertz Pentium Overdrive MMX. This is like the 20th computer I've stuck the CPU in, it seems like, but it's working beautifully. Um, it now has MMX instructions, which is nice. Also gave it the um, 3D Effects Voodoo 1 video card, so it now has 3D video on it. And it now has a PCI USB card, which works great with Windows 95, surprisingly. Of course, there's really not much you can use as far as USB is concerned with Windows 95, but thanks to a driver from ToastyTech.com, I'm able to use a USB flash drive with it, which is really, really cool. Of course, I don't use it too much since this is connected to my network, so I can just copy files to and from it that way. And I guess that's about it as far as upgrades are concerned. Computer, like I said, is running um, solidly. Oh, and I also gave it a fast media remote because apparently this computer originally shipped with a fast media remote, so makes sense to give it one. And of course, it does still need to be retro brighted and have a new uh, spec sticker printed for it. We will do that at a later date. So, let's check out how this computer performs. The person who sold me this computer um, wanted, to, wanted me to give him a quick shout out, so I will um, go ahead and grant that request. The um, guy that sold me this computer, his YouTube channel is Stephen Smith. I will put his um, YouTube address in the description, but he does a lot of um, vintage computer related videos, mostly involving um, old Macintosh computers, but Anyway, he uh, does a lot of good videos, and I highly recommend checking out his channel when you have a chance. So, anyway, let's go into our system properties. We've got a Cirrus Logic 5440 um, onboard video. I did upgrade it to 2 megs of RAM. There's our Packard Bell 3020 monitor, 17 inch. Uh, 3Com Etherlink network card. The uh, emulated SCSI controller for the Damien Tools CD emulator. So I can mount my ISO images on this computer. Works great. And our Packard Bell sound card with our Voodoo 3D. Chipset goodies. And our um, USB host controller. So, let's see, we have um, one partition that is. Uh, 14.7 gigabytes, that's for the OS to live on, and our other partition, 14.8 gigabytes, which includes all my games and data. Oh, and it does have internet access, um, not that you would ever want to take this online, but thanks to the 3Com Etherlink controller card, and a copy of Retrozilla for Windows 95, we can access the internet eventually. And this is the home page I use on here. This is a really cool website I needed to do a full video about sometime. This is called theoldnet.com. Basically it's a website designed to look like old websites from the mid to late 90s to be run on old computers like this. But the um, cool part about this, com about this website is that it gives you access to the um, Internet Archive Wayback Machine without having to use their um, modern website which kills computers like this. So we can just go to www.packardbell.com set it to uh, 1996 huh, also has 1995 I doubt that's gonna work because Archive only goes back to 1996 Yeah, I believe this is the 96 um, page for Packard Bill. Yes, it is. 
Oh well, I would have loved to have seen Packard Bell's website from 1995, but again, the archive, internet archive, Wayback Machine only goes as far back as the latter part of 1996. So, yeah, if you want to see the Packard Bell site from 95, forget it. So yeah, I'll do a more in-depth video on that website um, at a later date, but I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, we can do a quick game, maybe something to show off the uh, 3D effects card on here. How about a little bit of um, Need for Speed 2? Pop it in the drive. Yeah, this is a great computer. effects logo. Skip through that. Okay, I need to set it to use my uh, joystick if it hasn't already been set. I have to do everything manually for some reason. Okay, that's good enough. When I can, I do love using um, the joystick. It's a lot easier than a keyboard, especially on games like this. Layer one. Uh, let's see, what do we want to drive? Uh, these, these look, these look like cars from 2015, but not the real 2015. The Back to the Future Part Two, 2015. Okay, we'll go with the Ford Mach Three. Location. Okay, proving grounds. That'll be good enough. Boy, this looks really good. It's a Packard Bell built in February 1996 is capable of um, producing graphics like this with the right upgraded hardware that is. And this is being powered by a 200 megahertz Pentium MMX 3D Effects Voodoo 1 and 32 megs of RAM. Oh, and onboard video of 2 megs of video memory there as well. I know I'm not doing too good on this. <laughs> this looks really, really good. Okay, maybe that wasn't a good idea going that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm in last place. I love this game, but it doesn't love me back. <laughs> LGR, the master of Need for Speed games, is probably looking at this and just crying at how terrible I am. <laughs> Sorry, LGR.
Okay, I'm not gonna go that way this time. <laughs> This is like a training track. I'm, I'm not even doing good on it. On the joystick I'm using is, um, what else? The Microsoft Sidewinder 3D Pro. Best joystick ever made, in my opinion. I'm in fourth position now. It's kind of surprising. I'm playing this while standing up, so it's kind of an odd angle. My right, final lap. If I, if I get past um, fourth place, I'll be surprised. at the end. Uh, fourth place. Uh, that's, I'm surprised we made it that far. <laughs> okay. Let's drop out of this and uh, show a quick little DOS game. Check that. Go ahead and um, exit to MS DOS. I'll try to do a more in depth video on this computer um, at a later date. Okay, go to my secondary partition. Okay, uh, wait. <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> this is a DOS game I've been enjoying lately. Um, Hocus Pocus. The full version. <laughs> Get a new game. Do this one here. Easy. Great little platformer from 1994. And now I don't know where I'm going. So yeah, this computer can uh, play games from pretty much any kind of game made up until I'd say 1998, maybe even 1999 if you want to push things a little far. And that era of games, uh, I'd say Windows 3.1 and 95 and DOS of course are probably my favorite era of computing. 
they really got things right in that era. This angle is killing my neck. There we go. Rear years. One more crystal, and then we can call it quits. Not sure where to go now. And that's about all there is to say about the Packer Bell Platinum Pro 22 for now. Very thankful to have this computer. Thanks again to Steve Smith for sending this my way. And um, again, check out his channel um, when you get a chance. He has some good videos there, including a couple of videos about this exact computer. <laughs> so, until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.